I've just picked up the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter f 2.8 lens for Sony mirrorless cameras. It took me a lot of deliberation to choose this lens. So today I'm sharing with you the pros and cons of this lens, why I chose it in the hope of helping you to choose which wide angle zoom you would like for your Sony a7S III, a7 IV, or any other Sony mirrorless full frame camera. So let's get into it. <laughs> Hey friends, Will here. Yes, finally got myself a wide angle zoom for my Sony a7S III. Also, I'll be using it on my Sony a7 III as well for photography. But yeah, wide angle zooms, tricky one. I've decided on the Tamron. I'm pretty stoked about my decision. I think I've made the right choice, but it wasn't an easy decision to make. So why did I choose the Tamron 17 to 28? And what are the pros and cons of this lens? So first of all, a couple of features about the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter. It's got a fixed aperture of 2.8 throughout the focal range. It's 17 to 28 millimeter. So not quite as wide as some other options, not quite as zoomed as some other options, but still within that super wide kind of focal range. It's a fairly plasticky construction to be fair, and it's got rubberized zoom and focus rings, which are quite nice. The rings are the opposite way around than on most lenses. So on most of my other lenses, this is would be the zoom, ring and this would be the focus but on this lens the front ring here the bigger ring is the zoom ring which controls the focal range um, it's got an internal barrel zoom design which means the lens does not change size when you're zooming from 17 to 28 which is quite nice and when you buy this lens in the packaging you're going to get just the lens itself and a plastic lens hood the filter thread for the lens is 67 millimeters. I've popped a little UV filter on there at the moment just to protect the element. The lens does have some weather sealing, although it doesn't particularly, it says weather resistant in the documentation. So I'm not sure if it's fully weather sealed, but certainly I wouldn't mind having it out in a bit of light rain or drizzle. Um, and I have used it in those conditions and it's been fine so far. Uh, but yeah, maybe not the insane weather sealing of something like a GM lens, just to be uh, something to be aware of. And that's it, it's a super simple lens. No function buttons, no switches for manual focus or autofocus. Yeah, a really simple lens. No nonsense, you could say. Before I start talking about the pros and cons of this lens and why I chose it, I think it's probably important for you to understand why I wanted to get a wide angle zoom in the first place. So for me, this isn't a lens which will be on my camera all of the time. It's not my gold standard lens. I don't do architectural or real estate photography and video as a full time job. This for me is a lens which I'll be using occasionally. For example, if I'm doing something in a very tight space, then I want that super wide angle so that I can get the shot that I wanna get. So if I'm in a tight squeeze, super wide zoom comes in really handy. The other time I might use this lens is for real estate stuff, putting it on a gimbal and doing real estate video. But that isn't, again, it's not my bread and butter. It's something that I do occasionally. So I wanted to have a zoom, a wide angle zoom in my bag for those occasions. Also, I think this lens will be great for vlogging. I'm not a big vlogger. I make YouTube videos for the channel, but I don't do a huge amount of vlogging, but it is something I do occasionally, and I wanted something wider than the 24 mil, which is my current widest for those occasions. So this is the uh, Tamron 17 to 24, set to 24 millimeters, which is the widest that I used to have when I was in a kind of vlogging setup. I'm on the Sony a7S III, and I've got the camera on a Joby Gorillapod just sort of at arm's length away. And then if I whoop, that is now 17 millimeters, which obviously you can see a lot more of what is going on, which is great, exactly what you want. So if you're wondering what the Tamron 17 to 24 looks like in a vlogging scenario, then uh, yeah, this is it. 17 and that is 28 17 
28. And finally, I do a little bit of landscape and astro photography. So to have something super wide for those occasions is nice to have in the bag as well. So this isn't like, this focal range for me isn't the one that I use all of the time. So I think that's an important kind of thing to recognize when you're listening to my pros and cons because this isn't my gold standard lens. And because of that, I'm more likely to make concessions, which perhaps you won't. So just bear that in mind as we go into the pros and cons. So there's lots of things I like about this lens, but let's start with the things which I don't like about the lens quite so much. The first con about this lens, as I touched on very briefly, um, is that the focus and zoom rings are the, the wrong way round. Now, this is not a massive thing, it's not that big a deal, just something to be aware of. If you went all in on the Tamron lenses, then I think they're all sort of the same, so maybe it wouldn't even be an issue then. But for me, I'm using mainly Sigma or Sony glass, so it kind of seems a bit weird at times. I think I kind of get used to it, but yeah, just something to be aware of. Another con for this lens is it does not have the OSS optical steady shot, so no lens stabilization. Actually, there's quite few other options for wide angles that do have the optical steady shot. I think there's the Sony Zeiss 16 to 35 f4, which has the optical steady shot. But other than that, you're fairly limited for that. So just in case, if that is a consideration for you, if you absolutely want the steady shot, um, then this won't be the lens for you. Other cons for this lens. So this is 17 to 28. Some of the other options are 16 to 35 is probably the more common focal range, which is nearly twice the focal range that you'll get from this lens. Obviously at the wide end, 17 millimeters compared to 16 one millimeter difference. I'm not sure that makes a huge amount of difference. And then at the other end, 28 compared to 35, that's a fairly big chunky difference. However, I, have got quite a specific use case for this scenario for this lens so for me that's not a big deal i'm more likely to switch over to say the sigma 24 to 70 which i'm using for this video um, if i'm going into that kind of focal range for me this is all about the the wider end of the spectrum and if that 17 is a problem for you, then the chances are you may be better looking at something like either Sony or Sigma's 14 to 24 millimeter ultra wide zooms. Um, so just something to consider. The focal range isn't massive, but it does for me hit that, you know, 17 to me is wide enough for most of what I will need. So another consideration that could be seen as a con is the construction of the lens. It is a fairly budget option. So the lens is kind of made of plastic and rubber elements rather than the fully metal Sony or Sigma offerings. But that kind of ties in to the price of this lens, which I'll come on to shortly. And the only other sort of final con that I can think of for this lens is if you're a pixel peeper and you're really after absolute sharpness image quality, then this probably performs least favorably when you start comparing it to certainly the GM uh, lenses are gonna be sharper throughout the image and slightly less vignetting around the edges and slightly less distortion. But I actually think this lens performs pretty great, right? And when we start to look at the pros for this lens, you'll probably start to see why I decided to choose it. So the first thing um, as far as sort of the pros for this lens, it has to be the price. So I picked this lens up from Amazon and it was 750 pounds. But when you compare that to the GM 16 to 35, which is like 2000 pounds, then suddenly you start to really ask yourself whether you do need the extra sharpness that the GM is gonna give you or the extra focal range that's gonna give you. I mean, the next lens in price for comparison to this would be the Sony Zeiss 16 to 35 F4 with the optical steady shot. 
and even that lens is going to cost you more than the Tamron and yes it's got the optical steady shot and yes it is metal construction however you're sacrificing aperture for that lens and for my use case for this I'd much rather have the f2.8 than I would the uh, optical steady shot or the metal construction so it's just you know budget camera hands I guess comes into play but yeah this is an incredibly affordable wide angle zoom so that's got to be the main benefit of this lens the next pro about this is the internal barrel zoom great if you want to use this lens on a gimbal you can balance it it stays balanced throughout the range and doesn't sort of work the motors too much on your gimbal so that's really great it's also incredibly lightweight compared to some of the other options i think it's about 500 grams which is half of the weight of something like the gm 16 to 35 f 2.8 again if you're trying to keep the rig weight down if you're putting it on a gimbal and carrying it around for hours on end then the, every gram counts so really lightweight um, and finally it's autofocus ability absolutely mad fast and reliable absolutely zero complaints from this lens for photography I would expect nothing less for video it's actually really impressive that a lens for this price uh, delivers such accurate and smooth autofocus results for video so kudos Tamron so to summarize a super affordable budget wide angle zoom yes it's not perfect but it's got so much going for it it's super wide not as wide as some other lenses it's super light it's fast it's f 2.8 throughout internal barrel zoom and weather resistant whatever that means tamron for me when I was looking at the options, I was so tempted by the Sony G Master 16-35 f2.8, but £2,000 for a lens which is an occasional lens for me just didn't make sense. From looking at the GM, I kind of talked myself down, and even though there's a few things about this Tamron which aren't perfect for the occasional use that I'll be using it for I'm so pleased with it so far and I tell you what since I've had it I've used it so much I found it to be so great particularly on the gimbal putting it on the gimbal is so nice compared to the heavy 24 to 70 Sigma which I'm filming with right now or even the 24 millimeter Sigma Prime the f1.4 which I use regularly that's still a really heavy lens this is so refreshing to have something light and yeah it's just been a joy to use anyway I'm rambling now so that is the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter f 2.8 for Sony some of the pros and cons that I've the conclusions that I've drawn anyway from shopping around I've decided to buy it maybe you should too I don't know let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about this lens about my rationale are there any other options that I should have considered let me know give me buyer's remorse if you must but that's it for today thanks for watching I hope you found that helpful and I will see you next time